think I'm ready. I've kind of haven't been as ready as what I normally am this time of year. Normally I've already started a lot of my tomato seeds and my peppers and I have been slacking. Hi, my name is Kaylee and I've got a lot of visions and dreams and ideas, but sometimes I just don't have the motivation. But I think today, today is the motivation that I needed. I needed to be in here. I needed to soak up as much light and I figured why not get my trays ready because we're not, we're not exactly too late. And it's a perfect day for me to get all of my medicinal seeds started. forget to mention but I am located in Virginia my grow zone is 6b and I think last I checked our our last frost date is May 6th I believe so we're not out of the woods yet when it comes to snow or weather we have just had an abnormally fake spring it's it's well we've had a fake we've had a fake spring pretty much all winter minus a few cold days here and there so which is kind of why I'm like, I feel like I haven't been able to move forward because I haven't experienced snow yet. The seeds that I'm gonna be using today are from Haas Tools. Now I put out a video about a month or so ago of, of kind of introducing you to the plant and, and all, the, all the seeds that I actually got. And I'll make sure to put that video down below if you guys want to kind of uh, start familiarizing yourself with the plant and just, rushing on the topic of, of what it offers medicinally. I know that a lot of these I can start outside and just do a direct sow. However, I think it's very important to kind of familiarize yourself with the way the plant grows. So you know exactly what you are growing, especially when you're talking about herbal medicine or blending it with teas or using it in tinctures. It's a good way for you to, to kind of grow a relationship with these plants and plus it's gonna make you smile. The seed trays that I'm using, they also come from Haas Tools. They hold 162 uh, little cell pods for each plant. I like them, I think they're a lot easier. They're thick, which makes it nice. I've been able to reuse them every year. When you are reusing your seed trays, always make sure to completely disinfect them and wash them. I went ahead and had all of this set up. I didn't think to film. I thought that that would be boring. So boom, look at this. It's magic. It's set up. We're going to start with the camo meal. And I have one gram one gram of seeds. Look how small. Oh my goodness. What's amazing to me is looking at what one gram of chamomile seeds look like. That is pretty much equivalent to maybe five or six chamomile flowers, you know, the flowers that we use in our teas. I would say that's about five or six flowers to produce this many seeds. And could you imagine how, how many chamomile flowers we're gonna be able to produce with just one gram? That's the thing that excites me. And when you're going about growing your chamomile and, and also planning on harvesting, you have to think about that. You need to think about that regenerative aspect of being able to, to save seeds for, for next year. Now, I just made a big mess right here, so probably shouldn't have pulled them all out, <laughs> um, but I'm just gonna sprinkle maybe a few in the holes. I know that I'm probably gonna have to thin them out but it'll be easier to do versus me trying to dig, dig the seed out. 
The other thing about chamomile is that it takes about 60 to 90 days for full maturity. Now we're going to be only harvesting the flower of the chamomile. That's something that we will take. We will dry it, put it in our teas, uh, especially for nighttime. And then we also tincture the, the chamomile flower in, in alcohol as well as using uh, glycerin to make a glyceride. But it's my favorite in tea form. Don't forget <laughs> to label it because, oh, don't ask me how I know. I just know. My second favorite herb that I love to grow specifically for relaxing, anxiety, stress, sleep, is uh, lemon balm. So lemon balm is also a very beautiful, beautiful little plant. And I'm going to grow a good bit of lemon balm. So pretty much I have a whole bunch of seeds and I, I just <laughs> used half of my tray just for chamomile. So y'all know where my heart is, right? <laughs> but lemon balm, I'm going to place um, directly beside it. That is also going to be a quarter of an inch in depth. These are a little bit bigger, luckily. A little bit bigger little easier to manage. That's all I'm going to pour out. I'm going to start the seeds with just a few in each. Mainly because I don't really need to over overdo it. The germination rate on lemon balm is about 99%. So if really, I'd be happy with just one. However, it is kind of challenging to know that you're just dropping one at a time. No, oh, I forgot. I'm going to use this as my marker. This is as far as I'm going. Hopefully I didn't forget to do. We're just going to, just in case. I spun the tray around so that I can get to this end. I have a little bit left in this tray and I think I'm gonna continue on the, the pattern of, of sedative Nervine plants and I'm gonna go ahead and start some catnip. Now, catnip is fun. Uh, very good for a nighttime tea as well. We're just gonna go ahead and finish out this section right here with catnip. Now for catnip, if you were starting it directly, doing a direct sow, it would be after the last frost date. Again, we're not there yet. I'm going to go ahead and get it started in here. I think it's going to do just fine. We're planting it the same thing, a quarter of an inch deep, and the maturity date is 90 to 120 days. See the seeds on this one? So again, just going to put a few, a few in. Let's see, what is the germination rate? The germination rate is 90 on this one, so I'm I'm okay putting a few more, a few more seeds per per pod. About two or three. And again, once we go to plant this, I can kind of weed them out. This I'm just gonna slightly cover it. The big thing is is when it comes to germinating seeds, you don't want to necessarily press down too, too much. You want it to be loose. So that's why I'm just very gently covering each spot where I put the seeds. And sometimes I don't even really do this. Sometimes I will just sprinkle a little bit of soil directly on top um, to, to not pack it in too, too much. It's starting to get dark and as much as I want to continue this, I think I'm just going to um, stop where I'm at and we're going to pick this up tomorrow. That is kind of my plan, so I will, I'll be right back. The girls are already starting to go to work this morning, so I'm going to head back into the, the greenhouse and we're going we're gonna to pick up where we left off. First, coffee. Now the other day I took you guys on a walk with me outside of the apothecary to show you what we have that is starting to, to pop up and starting to grow. And as you, as you see, it doesn't look like a lot right now, but given a little bit of time and a little bit more sunshine, it is, it's going to come alive. And that's something that I'm just, I'm so pumped about. 
but I want to continue to grow motherwort. I showed you that little plant. It's such a sweet little plant. And yes, it is going to spread and I'm okay with that because I'm the type of gardener, as much as I love gardening, I like the idea to plant plants kind of a little bit everywhere, you know? So I'll have some in my, my raised beds here um, and then outside, just naturally growing outside in the woods. That is probably my, my favorite type of gardening because I don't have to do much weeding. I just kind of let them, let the plants be feral and do what they're going to do. Uh, but I have motherwort here and unlike the catnip and the chamomile and the lemon balm, the depth of the, the motherwort, you're actually going to, to plant them half of a quarter of an inch, which is an eighth of an inch. You don't have to drop them so far down into, into the, the seed tray, which, oh, let me see, which is going to be about half half of that right there. And I'll probably just eyeball it instead of trying to use my marker to mark my little paintbrush. Uh, but we're gonna start motherwort because everybody could use a little bit, everybody could use a little bit of mother. Look at the seeds. I'm putting about, trying to put about two seeds per, per seed cell in in just to kind of better the odds, but not overseed. And I'm just very lightly placing them in and just kind of covering, not, not overdoing it. I'm using this as kind of a marker for me, so I know I'm only doing three. That's kind of my goal today. Now, hyssop is one of my one of my favorite little plants to grow here. I think it it to me it has like a a licorice kind of flavor to it. Um, we plant hyssop mainly for our pollinators, but we do use it. Um, it it's considered an, an expectorant as well as an antispasmodic, so it's good for your digestive system. Or if you are, you've got a cough or a cold and you need to expect, you know, expectorant, get something, <laughs> break it up. Um, so again, it's a good little plant, beautiful little flower. And yes, the pollinators absolutely love it. So it's not only good for us, but it's also good for them. Uh, but the seeds are tiny as well, of course. The depth wise, you're gonna plant them about a quarter of an inch um, into each cell. I'll use about two seeds per cell. It, the germination rate's about 85%. If I accidentally do one more, that's not a big thing. We can we can seed them out when it, when it comes time to go ahead and plant them into the ground. Now I have some already established that are already growing in my raised beds, uh, but my, my goal this year is to kind of plant them a little bit everywhere. So we're gonna start some more. I already did two rows here, but I'm going to go ahead and just do one more row. Why not at this point? Now I found that this actually works pretty well, <laughs> the end of the paintbrush to gently, gently cover the potting mix directly onto the seeds. Of course that wasn't graceful at all, but I think it's gonna be okay. <laughs> Next we're gonna start the lemon drop or the, the toothache plant. It's called the toothache plant for a reason and if you have an opportunity to give it a try, it is uh, quite numbing. <laughs> so, so yeah, just bear in mind, a little bit goes a long way, but what I want you to, to consider when you're starting your, your medicinal garden, whether it's for, for teas or use it for coughs, cold, indigestion, uh, think about the things that you might keep in your, inside your medicine cabinet in home, you know, or a gel if you have any, any issues with with pain in your mouth, um, give toothache plant a try. Plus it grows a beautiful little flower and it's something that you can do for yourself. 
and have have for yourself. These are the seeds. They're not that big, much like many of the other seeds. And the time to plant is early spring. We are here. We're gonna plant them our uh, same thing, a quarter of an inch deep. The maturity is 120 days. So it's gonna be a little bit longer, but regardless, uh, it's a it's an interesting little little flower. Oh, and let's see. The germination is 88%. I'll still do about two seeds per, um, maybe. There we go. And I am only doing three rows. The wind's starting to pick up outside. All right, I have got some whorehound. Now, I don't have any whorehound growing here. Um, that's been one that I've been kind of like, yeah, it needs to, I need to actually start growing it. But whorehound, uh, the one thing, I need to trim that tree up there. The one thing that I want to try with whorehound uh, this year is to try my luck making whorehound candy. I know, right? Uh, but I think it's gonna be really, really good. Now, whorehound, you're gonna plant it three weeks before the last frost. Again, we're starting them inside. The depth is the same, quarter of an inch, and then the germination rate is actually really high on this. It's like 98%. And the maturity, days to maturity, is 80 days. And let's see. Look how sweet those little seeds are. So I'm actually gonna plant less in these cells. The one thing that I found that has actually been very helpful when it comes to starting your, your smaller seeds, like your herbs, is to get your, your potting mix nice and wet prior to planting your seeds. The reason is, is because when you go to water your seeds, especially some that are, are not very deep, you might accidentally misplace the, the seeds or dislodge them and then you're left with a mess. <laughs> Unless you are using one specific tray per seed, however, I'm not, I'm actually mixing it up. So when you're, when you're starting your seeds, get your potting mix nice and, nice and wet. And then the other thing that I love about these seed trays is once I plant them, I don't water it directly on top. I will, I will actually put the water in this container. This is what I water. And then what happens is it, it soaks up the, it soaks up the water uh, from the underside so I won't accidentally disrupt or dislodge the seeds. Again, these are things that I have learned along the way and it's because I've messed up. Next, I have Feverfew. Now, I put out a video um, over last summer about my use of Feverfew and why I actually really like growing it. Feverfew kind of looks, it, it looks like a, kind of looks like a little daisy. Um, beautiful little flower. The leaf is what we use. Uh, it's actually kind of interesting. If you take it and you pick it and you put the leaf in your mouth, it has a very aspirin-like flavor. But Feverfew uh, is one that I use to help uh, fight off my migraines. If I have a migraine, it's one that I'm not gonna like go to, but if I, if I know that there are things that trigger it, like bright sun, temperature change, things like that, I tend to, especially weather change, if I know the storm's coming, the barometer dropping, there's something about it that triggers my migraine. So I use Feverfew kind of like a preventative. It's not for everybody though, so do your research, but I, I do have a video about Feverfew and how I used it, uh, and I can put that down below. I'm only going to do about two rows of Feverfew um, because I have some plants established already, but I wanted to show you guys this because uh, this is a could be a good alternative for for you if if you are a migraine sufferer <laughs> sufferer. But fewer few, you're gonna plant it about a quarter of an inch as well. The maturity date's 90 days, and uh, when it comes to transplanting all of these, I will show you kind of how we do it too. 
uh, so you guys can get a better idea, but look how tiny these little, these little seeds are. Kind of similar, very similar to, to chamomile. But this one I keep on hand pretty much quite often. Germination rate is about 85%. So again, two seeds. get access to this side. Next we're going to plant some holy basil. Now holy basil is probably one of my favorite basils that we have growing here in in our garden. Uh, one the bees absolutely love it. It produces thousands and thousands of flowers and beautiful nectar for them but for for me what it what it offers for me is something that that I truly appreciate. It's considered an adaptogen and adaptogen is a is a category of herbs that will allow your body to be able to adapt to different stressors, whether it's uh, job stress, work stress, well, that's the same thing. Anyways, you get what I'm saying. Uh, seasonal stress, it helps support your body through those. So instead of the crazy all spaz up and down all over the place, you just kind of go throughout life and just, it's very, it's very calming very mellow. I put it in many of our teas. Uh, I just, I love it. I absolutely love the smell of it. So I'm going to finish out this row uh, with just adaptogens with, with just holy basil. You're going to set these seeds a little less. It's going to be uh, an eighth of an inch. It takes about 75 to 80 days for maturity and the germination rate is 95%, but look how beautiful. Gorgeous little seeds. So with this one, very, very light up on top. Um, trying to get at least one seed per, per cell. It's starting to get a little bit warm in here. Next up, we're going to plant some coneflower. Now coneflower, uh, a lot of people hear coneflower, but they don't always realize that that is actually echinacea and can be used medicinally as well. There's a couple of really good books out there that I have. One of them is called Herbal Antibiotics. Uh, I would read up on echinacea. It's a, it's a lovely little plant. When it's used medicinally though, you, you kind of want to, it's, it's one of those, hit it hard for two weeks and then back off of it. Um, now, we love echinacea here uh, on our in our garden. The bees absolutely adore it. And the seeds are quite larger compared to the other seeds that we had been planting. Uh, my goal is to, to actually plant a good bit of echinacea. And the reason is, is because I wanna add more into uh, a variety of our raised beds. I have an idea on how I want to how I want my my garden beds to look this year and it's going to be one of those perfectly imperfect plan uh, for my garden beds but I do plan on planting more outside and around this area I shared a good bit in my last video when I started talking about the seeds so if you if you want to know more definitely do your research or hop over to that video and of course as we as we go throughout this garden season and and work this lovely little plant we uh we'll, we'll we'll talk more about it but the germination rate is 78 percent so that's kind of why i plan on doing uh, quite a bit more and then the depth that we're going to be planting is an eighth of an inch deep um, and maturity date is like 120 days so it takes a little bit longer but that's okay the one thing that i will add though is you can plant this in in spring or actually in fall uh, so what I do is typically the plants that I've, I've I've started in spring I will let them let the flowers go to seed and I'll just grab the the head of it and then sprinkle it around so that I'm I'm allowing it to to continue to grow so I'm gonna go ahead and just do two per and I'm like I said I, I do want to grow a good bit of echinacea this year 
try to spread them out a little bit. There are a few more seeds that I, I do plan on starting. Uh, I need to go down into the house though and get them from my basement because I completely forgot to grab them. But for right now, my plan is I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of water to the bottom of each of these trays. The temperature in here is, I would say it feels probably close to 80 degrees. Uh, it's very nice and warm and I, I don't anticipate it getting too much hotter in here. However, I do anticipate it getting colder, especially this evening. So I have germination mats. I could easily set them up in here and I might come back and do that later this evening. I have a cloth that I, I might put over this so that it, it helps keep the heat but not actually cook the soil. That's the only thing that's hard about, that I found when it comes to growing in a space that's not controlled, is you, you do have to pretty much babysit it every single day. So for now, I'm gonna add some water and then I'll probably come back up this evening and, and get them a little situated. And uh, hopefully, once we start seeing some sprouts, we can finish identifying and familiarizing yourself with these herbs. So, as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. And of course, Learn something old. Bye, guys.